practice? Can you tell people what type of music you make? I make incredible music for the ladies. Make you feel real good and I'll make you enjoy yourself and all of that good stuff. Curiosity killing that cat. Damn sass, how you do it like that? Curiosity killing that cat. Damn sass, how you do it like that? Rolling the back. I love touching and squeezing all over your body. Love when you strip, make it drip, baby, we can get naughty. Hopping on top, make it pop, she gon' ride my little shoddy. Bad little freak, so my sheets, now my knees getting weak, cause she's sucking me sloppy. I love touching and squeezing all over your body. Love when you strip, make Hey, how you guys doing? My name is Alan Dash. I am a music business professional, I guess. Um, I started a distribution company, did project management at Amazon Music. Have worked in this industry for years and years and years, and I really just love seeing people thrive, so that's why I do what I do, right? And so that said, please find me at a dot dash junior, a dot d a s h j r at Instagram. You'll find all my stuff there, and um, you're watching the Tasmania show. You already. Yep. Who is your favorite female rapper? Ooh, right favorite, in, right in currently and currently, then of all time. Current favorite female rapper. Okay. Yeah. I love um, this question. She Real is my current favorite female rapper. Mm. She has a song, uh, she has an album out called I Don't Rap About My... Okay, hey now. <laughs> <laughs> Curiosity killed the cat. Please, go check it out. <laughs> okay. And you will see like why she's so good. You know what I mean? Now, if we were talking like a bigger female rapper, um, i probably have to go with Young Ma, even though she's not Young really... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, from the, yeah, even yeah, though yeah. she's not really like... Doing her thing no more. When you would see those freestyles, she could spit, mm -hmm. and it wasn't just the typical thing that you would see. She could really spit. So I rock with her. So question: Have you ever heard of Taz Tycoon? I have heard of Taz Tycoon. Okay, you so you already know. So what I'm gonna need, not need. Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. What you gonna need? Oh, well, what I'm gonna need for you to do is check Taz Tycoon out, okay. so that when the next time someone asks you who's your favorite female rapper, it's hopefully. You. It's me. So Spotify, Apple, all of that? Spotify, Apple, all of that. I just dropped a single called Blue Chips. I just dropped an album called Sex Tape, my 10th album. I'm independent, so and I'm, I'm, I'm loading the clip. And because of all the gems that he dropped here for me today, I'm getting that six-month rollout and running my ads and everything. Demonstration speaks louder than conversation, so make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your post notifications, and don't forget, it's Taz Tycoon, your favorite female rapper. You already know. That's <laughs> right. Hey everyone, I'm Channing B. Smith. I'm an entertainment attorney, and you are watching the Tasmania Show. I would suggest that daily you guys meditate. In the beginning of meditation, I sucked at meditation. I always was questioning, am I actually meditating? Because I don't know. It feels like I'm just in my brain talking to myself. Okay? That's part of it. That's the first stage of meditating. You're going to be in your brain questioning whether you're actually meditating or not. But you are. Okay? Find some guide for meditating. There was one that I used to use on YouTube. It worked actually really well. You know how when they say um, you should have gratitude? Wait, okay, they tell you to visualize. Hold on. You know how they tell you the gratitude journal? That should be part of the visualization in the meditation. The way that I, that I, this is for me, and I don't know that this will work for you, but I'm going to give you guys my methodology and how I get this to work. Do three minutes of breath work. Three minutes of breath work, okay? So. <sighs> consistently, do not stop for three minutes. This will like prep you, right? Then at that moment, after the three minutes, start to visualize a time that you feel gratitude for and go back to the actual feeling. So one of them that I use is when I took my daughter, last year she turned 16, right? And she's half Mexican. So she wanted a quince when she was 15, but I was like, I'm black and I don't really know how to throw quinces. <laughs> Your family is up there, it don't make sense. So what I did was I took her to Spain for her 16th birthday. Yes. Wow, so cool. And uh, we were la when we were landing in Spain, we were both giddy as hell. We were both like, I'm in here, dog. So that is the that is the visual that's what I visualize in my brain when I'm doing the gratitude portion. Mm. So the three minutes of breath work, then the gratitude. What happens when you visualize this after the breath work, you'll actually feel the same feeling that you were feeling 
when whatever you're visualizing is happening, you'll feel it. You take that feeling and you apply it because after the gratitude portion, you're going to go into what you want. So you take the feeling and you apply it to the visualizing of what you want and you'll start to see you'll manifest it. I just want to pause really quickly here and say that the scientific term for this is called neuroplasticity. Okay? This is, that's what this is called, neuroplasticity. What you're doing is you are telling your body because our, our nervous system, our emotions and everything else, it doesn't necessarily know what's happening on the day to day. It just knows the feeling. So when you begin to manifest and you can tie into, like you said, that giddy feeling and then begin to think about something else that you want in the future, you are telling your body and the feelings there, when this happens, this is the feeling that I want to have because it just knows to process that. So you're getting those dope, that dopamine and everything else. But again, the, the scientific term for this um, is neuroplasticity, intention setting. You guys, there's a whole science-based stuff behind it. The breath work is always also important. The guided meditations are important. So I, I'm just pulling this out because I don't want people to think like, oh, he's just making some stuff up. No, 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 no. This is science behind this, okay? So just, just wanted to let y'all know that one. And it works. It works. It, it works. And it's part of the process. It's getting all the going out of there. And it's not bad doesn't mean I'm doing it wrong. It means I'm doing it right. And then once that space is clear, there'll be more space for um, other things to come up and do the shadow work, right? Yep. And then um, with the neural rehabilitation, um, neuroplasticity, it's the ability for your brain to develop new neurons and strengthen them. So if you've been thinking a certain pattern for a very long time, um, like what you doesn't use it or lose it. So if you stop making those negative patterns, it will go away, but it takes time and it takes a lot of practice. And that's why it's called rehabilitation or habilitation because you're developing habits, new cool. habits, rehabiting yourself. Preach. So be patient with yourself. And if you can only meditate for like a couple of minutes at a time, like give yourself grace because it's not easy. And even with my clients, we would do like the we call it like the just right fit for goals. We'd have our long-term goals, and then we break them down to short-term goals, but they couldn't be too crazy because then we're not gonna achieve them. Like if a patient, stroke patient hasn't brushed their teeth and they're completely flaccid on one arm, it's not gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna have them brush their teeth when they have no movement. It's gonna be like, can we get a contraction? Can we get a little range of motion a few weeks later? Can we do this? Because then we're just setting ourselves up for failure. But even me, in the field I come from, like. I know cognitively that these are the ways you should progress people and have helped heal a lot of people, but with myself, I'm like really crazy hard on myself and I'm like, why aren't I over here, from over here, immediately. <laughs> so, um, and also with the visualization, um, there is, yeah, science behind that and um, the brain doesn't know the difference when it you're, it, it doesn't. doesn't. It like, feeling. Um, yeah, even yeah. with my amputees, what we would do is we'd have their hand here we'd have like a mirror here because they would get pain in the residual limb. And then we'd say, okay, they look at their arm yeah, as though it's like over here and they stretch out the other one and their brain actually, they stop feeling the pain. They're able to stretch that arm out mm -hmm. because what the brain sees, they think it's happening. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we just gotta rehab it ourselves. Yeah. There you go. That was a TED Thank talk. You, oh my God, you better do it, Jerry. <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> Where's my income at? And then that starts to set other goals and tasks, right? My income is not there yet, so what am I gonna do to get from where I'm at and bridge the gap to where I need to be and what time frame can I put on those things? You feel what I'm saying? And be realistic, you're gonna have failures. If I told you, I'll give you a quarter, right? And I told you, what side of the quarter do you like? Heads or tails? Hey. No, no record, what side of the quarter do you like? Yes. You like heads? So I can give you the quarter, but you have to accept tails. You're not gonna get the quarter without tails. You'll get the heads, but you're not gonna get it without tails, meaning you're not gonna get success without failure. Mm -hmm. I'm a Taoist. If any of you have ever read the Tao Te Ching, mm -hmm. the Tao Te Ching, yeah. okay? It's all about how happiness defines sadness. Mm -hmm. Good defines bad. Mm -hmm. Meaning they are one and the same mm -hmm. in many respects. 
you have to be excited about the bad just like you're excited about the good because the bad is the only thing that gives you the good. <clears throat> if we were at a baseline consistently, you wouldn't know that you were having a good day. Because it would be without the, 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 the distinction or the other side of it. So you wouldn't know. It would just be, I think it's a good day. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's just a day. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What it did for me is it took away the anxiety that came with the bad day. It became one of those things where it was like, no, this is part of it. I need this. This is the, and the great thing is, whenever I'm in bad, right, maybe you're going through a month where it's pouring, right? The car didn't went flat. The carburetor broke down. You know what's coming next. I'm going to get out of this, and it's going to pop back up, and I'm going to be in a place where I'm like, ugh, money's coming in. Ugh, I just got a placement. Ugh, I met this new human being in my life. You know what I'm saying? So you need those. You need that balance. I'm sorry. So when I get through those points, I'm always just kind of like, okay, something good is going to happen. It has to because it can't go, you know what I mean, any lower. And, and being able to see that, you know, day and night, life, death, that's part of it. Love and hate. It's, they're the inverses of each other, but it's the same thing. The exact same thing. And accepting that means that you accept life, you understand what it is, and you now know how to climb out of your ruts, and you will know how to step down when you need to. All of that is super important, especially as you guys keep living, keep navigating life, and um, you'll get there. Mm -hmm. Pat, question? Um, really quick comment. So another thing in the same topic, we need to choose our pain consciously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's nice to know what we want when it comes to a goal, something nice, but we always need to look at the tails of the same situation and be like, if this doesn't work out and I get the flip side, will I be able to handle it? Yeah, mm -hmm. period. 100%. Because you know how, for example, I can look for a like, relationship with someone. The heads is going to be, it's going to be the best relationship ever. I'm going to be understood. I'm going to be loved. I'm going to be needed. The tails, this is going to be the horrible breakup and I'm going to be completely heartbroken. Can I handle this? Can I consciously sign up for this pain or probability of going through it? And when you say yes, even if it happens, I want to kind of, you know, gamble pretty much. You are in your willpower, and you're in your agency, and you're exercising. You'll feel so much better about your life. I want to... Powerful. And, and, and on that same note, that's actually one of the best things for negotiation as well. Because you understand, when you're able to set what your, your bottom line is, you know exactly when you're going to walk away from anything that's going to be there. It's not going to be something that's going to sway you or sway your decision making. You know what it is that you're willing to take, right? Mm -hmm. So which means you know what the hell you want and what you're going to get. And if anything compromises that, then you, you just know like, all right, well, this deal isn't for me. And it's fine. But that's that same thought process. Goes that was incredible. Like, I, you need to do TED Talks all the yeah. time. You be just, I'm telling you, it's like the way you just eloquent. I like how you speak. I'm pretty sure you're an amazing writer, too. Um, to add on to that, um, I'm experiencing shadow work. I did a sound bath uh, for the second time, but the first time I didn't know what the benefits was until a few months ago. And all this stuff came up. And um, I'm in life coaching, didn't know the difference between that and therapy. Like, I felt like therapy, I was talking about my problems. Life coaching, I was more progressive about an ac actionable plan of what I needed to do next. Um, but in that, I found that when you get, and this is for everybody in the room, I'm not sure if anybody's done shadow work, but uh, when you get to a point where you start to judge people and you get very frustrated with people, it's probably because it's something within yourself. So I've been recently realizing like, man, like I had to step back and isolate myself because I was seeing things. I'm like, why am I so pissed at you? Because it might be a skill that I've developed. Like, let's say I'm not late anymore. And then the, day, the first day I'm on time, I'm like, can't believe these niggas is late. You know what I'm saying? We start to like be like, you was just late yesterday and having grace and compassion for people and just understanding, just take a beat that if you feel yourself getting very worked up with anybody or anything, look at yourself and I realize, man, I'm just mad at myself and we are reflections, we attract who we are. So um, just, you know, when you feel that, just I think it's something that I didn't know. I'm like, I'm pissed off, I'm impatient, and I'm like, I think it'll allow you to take the power out of other people thinking that it's something they need to change and you can change the energy within yourself. You're scared of 
studying Reiki because I was like, oh no, maybe it's the devil, I don't know. But it, I was able to take some key things to practice on myself that I'm using in LA. And um, this is not a trauma dump. But like when my dad passed away, I saw like certain family members like depreciate me. And I literally, I do this in the shower and I will grab like the, I'll go like this all the way down, like a filter system. And anything that I'm touching that does not belong to me, mostly as an artist, because we're picking up a lot of people's mm -hmm. energy. Whoa. We can start spiraling and then we start drinking. Like, why are we drinking? Like, why am I doing this? Why am I even hanging around this person? You need to clean your energy field. Um, so like just doing this every morning, like and going over your arms, over your legs, uh, really helped me come within myself and um, help me shut off like the anger, the irritation, the anxiety, and um, create like an inner peace with literally in the middle of my chest that's not like this with other people, you know? And so I was right across the street, two blocks away, I was um, walking and I was like, oh, I'm sad, why am I so sad? And I was like, that's not me. And I went like this and I was like, nah. And I literally like me, I saw like, this blue field of energy like moved from my body and then that peace came back in and I was like oh that's weird and that happened two blocks away and so sometimes like the anger the irritation is because like we're picking up too much um and so like I, I have to do that every day mostly with creating this music and to be present in class with other people I have to or I get like really angry and I feel like my shoulders are up to here yeah. mm. and like there's only so much my vape pen can do I have to fail at something guess what's gonna happen I'm gonna fail at it if I think I'm if I'm walking into a situation and I know this is mine and I'm going to win especially when I'm prepared it's mine. Mm -hmm. It is mine. And I've already won. So your mind, your body, your energy, all of that working together for you creates your success. And, it's, and it may sound crazy or whatever, but guess what? A lot of this shit has been around since we as human beings have been around. We are vibrational energy, you know, fields, sources, whatever. We are spirits having a human experience, okay? Mm -hmm. Understand that, get through life, recognize life is what truly what you make it, and take care of your bodies. Take care of your bodies. Also, in the town, there's one thing that it says, right? This is this is a big one for you artists. It says the master does her work and then she lets it go. That's how it lasts forever. Mm -hmm. Isn't a question or anything. It's just kind of attaching to what you just said. It's just a recommendation for a book. It's called Psychomancy. It's a thousand dollars. What's it called? Psychomancy. A thousand art, hours? A th the art of psychomancy. So it's basically like every day when you do things, you don't recognize that, like you said, it's a manifestation of what you're thinking. But the art of psychomancy kind of teaches you that what you think is wrong with you is actually not wrong with you at all. It's just your brain telling you that it's something wrong with you and you can fix that. So, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. An additional comment on the Tao. There's a book that paraphrases it for people that might want it in a more modern way. It's called The Art of the Tao. It's by a dude named, I think, Stephen Capra. Okay. But Less, The Art of the Tao. Okay. And what was that book you said again? The, 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 oh, uh, Mindset by Carol Dweck. Mindset by Carol Dweck, okay. I'm gonna have all the videos, and all the recommendations <laughs> in this blog right here. I got y'all. I got y'all, I'm gonna DM everybody. We're gonna have all the information. All right. You will find ways to make shit work. This is where certain sacrifices come in as well. So if you're not willing to make just certain sacrifices, then how important is it to you, right? And it's not to take anything away because of course, still being able to set those boundaries, still being able to find time to sleep, still being able to find time to do the things that are necessary for you for your health is really important. But for me, as I was going through my process and, and, and my journey, I also recognize that you know what? Yes, I love nail art, love getting my nails done, love doing certain things for myself, right? Mm -hmm. I may have needed to stop that mm -hmm. for a little bit to say because I had other responsibilities here. And that was a short, you know, sacrifice that I could make for me 
in order to get to my end goal to be able to like, okay, I gotta buy my books, I gotta do whatever, I gotta do these certain things here and there. You will always find a way to make shit work if it's really, really, really important to you. That is what sacrifice is, okay? And I'm not saying go cold turkey and like completely like sacrifice, like everything, let like certain things, you know, everything go, but be very realistic and very strategic about the things that you're willing to forego in order to get to that next phase, that next stage, that next goal or whatever that you have for yourself. And then once that's done and you've checked it off your list, you can go right back to the things that make you happy. Nobody's saying that you have to give it up forever. Sacrifices are short term to get to your long term. So, and I'm not discounting, I'm not discounting what you had to say. I'm saying this as somebody who has literally lived through it. I have lived it. So I can, you can't talk to me about any degree that there is. I got them all, okay? <laughs> you can't talk to me about like being able to like juggle jobs and everything else. I've done it all. You can't talk to me about being able to do things as a parent and all that. I've done it all. And because I've done it all, it's the reason why I can take my fucking breaks now. That's my sacrifice. Look, and and, and right? that's the thing. You have to get serious about what you guys want in this life, right? Yes, I get you, but let me tell you something. When you get out of school, it's worse. Yeah, because you don't have the excuses. Because right now, you have a really structured life. Mm -hmm. Go to class at this time, go to class at this time. When you get out and you're hustling, it's going to get more hectic. And then you can either fall into this thing of, I go to work, I come home, I drink a six-pack. I go to work, I come home, I drink a six-pack. I go to work, I come home, I drink a six-pack. Two weeks of vacation, start over again. Go to work, go home, drink a six-pack, right? Or you can go, I'm going to push for something, right? But when you push for something, you have to separate where you're at. So I'm about to do an interview with Nate. Make sure you follow him. Nate on the street. Nate on the street. But we in the classroom right now because we schooling y'all. You feel me? So yeah. Ooh, we schooling y'all. No. He got my vocals right. They don't know. But I'll tell you about it later. Because they don't know about this thing. And we're back with Nate on the street. Today I have the wonderful, the talented, the amazing cast hiker. How are you doing? I'm feeling blessed by the best, magically delicious. Ooh, I'm feeling good. Can I ask you three questions? Okay, just not a Okay, I mean, I won't be. <laughs> um, let's talk about music. What is your favorite musical group? Oh, wow. Um, music. Uh, I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to take care of those who play. They're going to play. Hey, they're going to hate. Uh, I'll go to the station. Oh, that's promise. This promise. This promise. <laughs> you're going to die. They're going to get broken. Promise. Promise. Okay, no, I'm playing. I'll go to Destiny's Child. I'll go to Destiny's Child. Okay, okay. You know, Destiny's children. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. Here we are. At ASU, what is the best thing you learned from our conference this week? Or this weekend? The best thing I learned from ASU to get as many no's as possible because on the other side of no is a yes. Shout out to that shit. He said that. That was that was one of the ones. It was a lot, but that was the one. That was the one, not the two. Alright, and now can you tell people what type of music you make? Amazing music. It's like, it's so good quality. It's, it feels like 1500 or nothing. It feels uh, like impeccable. Your favorite female rapper. I just dropped a single called Blue Chip Sex Tape. He was at my listening party and he don't just stay for anybody. So to I be don't. honest, I will leave. He can let you know, but um, I make incredible music for the ladies. You know what I'm saying? Like, subscribe. I'm here. You know what I'm saying? I can make you feel real good and I'll uh, make you enjoy yourself and all that good stuff. But I, I, I make music for the ladies. You know what I'm Turn on your post notifications. We just finished this amazing, amazing expo. We had ASU 1500. You see everybody in the back. Like, we learned so much. I want to say thank you to Channing. Uh, thank you to Dash. Thank you to Doug. Thank you to Bruce. Thank you to Herb. Thank you to everybody that came, all the amazing students. We learned a lot about music and um, information, education can save a nation. We got air in the building. Get you some air. Come on. How you, how you going to breathe without air? You Come need on. her. It's essential. Come on. You know what I'm saying? And we got some amazing <laughs> things that we doing too. So like, subscribe, turn on your post notifications, and let them know. I might have to check out the Sound Academy you, again. You, this shit was amazing. Moochie, yeah. I have not had a chance to fo formally meet you. I'm Taz Tycoon. Nice I, to meet you. need some Taz Tycoon in your yeah. 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 So I got a question for you now that you're here on my YouTube channel. Who is your favorite female rapper right now? My favorite female rapper. Lotto. Lotto? Lotto. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. So yeah. if you're in the club right now, you're going to drop Lotto. Have you ever heard of Taz Tycoon? I haven't. 
Okay. Not yet. Not yet. I just dropped. You yeah. know what? So I just made a DJ service pack. So I got a song that I got to get your Instagram that I think okay, I have. A, I just dropped the album. I, I, I dropped a lot of music, but I specifically just dropped a song called Blue Chips. Blue that chips. I think that the D, the DJs I played it for at 1500, they said this is it. Okay. This goes. So like I'm gonna send that to him uh, privately. You live in Arizona, right? I'm in Arizona. Never. This is what we're gonna do, YouTube. I am going to do 20, 48 hours in Arizona. I'm gonna pull up on Moochie. We're gonna hit the studio. We're gonna go to the club, and we're gonna get a full experience documented here first. Oh, yeah. So if you really want to stay tuned, make sure you follow Moochie. Where can they follow you at? Party in the Valley, Desert Style. Hey, come on, you already know. Like, subscribe, turn your post notification. Let's go. Look at my chips.